Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about the placement scenario at INSEAD when compared to the placement scenario at top US business schools. Okay, we are going to divide this video into three parts. Number one, we are going to look at job locations and salary numbers. Number two, we are going to look at the post MBA sectors where the MBA students actually go and work. Number three, we are going to look at some of the specifics regarding Indian students. Okay. Now, before I jump into the video, please do hit that subscribe button if you have already haven't. That would be super helpful for me and also it would help the channel grow at a good pace. This video specifically, I'm making on request from one of the comments that I have seen in the last one or two latest videos. Okay, let's get started with the first part guys. That is looking into the, the job locations and the salaries. Now, if I compare INSEAD and the top US business schools, the job locations post MBA programs, right? You look at every single US business school and almost 95% of the candidates continue to work in the US. It's true for almost 99% of the students, guys, not even 95, right? And you look and you see any business school's placement report, that's pretty obvious. They actually give a distinction between what percentage of the students are working on the East Coast and West Coast, not different countries, okay? Now, if you look at in CR Business School's placement report, it's very obvious that, hey, folks actually end up working in different parts of the world. Let's look at the placement report and see it, okay? So, this map indicates that 26% of the MBA students post their graduation go on to work in Asia Pacific, right? 42% of the MBA students, again, go on to work in Northern Europe. Only 9% of them work in North America and roughly the same amount work in Africa and Middle East, right? So you can see that there is a lot of diversity with respect to actually where folks and folks are going and working post their MBA, okay? Now, this reflects directly on the salary numbers, right? You can't expect a McKinsey consultant to make the same amount in the US and also in Dubai, right? Dubai is literally zero tax. So the consulting companies also pay fewer dollars when you are working in Dubai compared to when you are working in San Francisco. And similarly, if you are working in Southeast Asia, let's say you are working in Jakarta office or if you are working in, let's say, Philippines, right? all these offices pay lesser salary because the cost of living is also low. So what happens? The average salary number of the NCR business school itself comes down when you compare with the average salary number of any top US business school. Right? If you look at the Financial Times ranking in 2022, right, NCR is ranked at number three and the salary numbers are so different. Right? If you just look at this report without any background that we talk through, it looks like, hey, the NCR business school's numbers are so low, it's $186,000. When you compare it with Wharton, it is $240,000, $237,000. Right? Chicago booth is $199,000. These numbers seem like so big and NCIs will look start looking very small. But if you understand the context behind the numbers, you will know the full picture. So guys, never look at a number and come to a decision. Understand the background of the number as well. Okay, this is not just for this specific analysis, but any analysis that you are going to do. Now, the second thing we look into is the, the sectors where MBA students go on to work after their MBA programs. Okay, this a quick look at this chart indicates that the top 10 employers at INSEAD are 80% of them are consulting companies, right? That's like, it's a consulting heavy school, in other words, right? McKinsey, Bain, BCG, take out Amazon, then the rest all except Shopee, all of them are consulting companies. What does that indicate? Very clearly consulting heavy school, right? And these consulting companies are recruiting for their offices in Australia, offices in Southeast Asia, Europe. Right? UK, bunch of these offices and none of these offices are primarily recruiting from the US. So if you go to any of these offices, it has a lot of INSEAD alums in them. Strong, very strong network. Now, what does the number in the bracket mean? The number in the bracket means that, hey, 50 people out of the total 119 already had an offer from McKinsey even before their MBA. Right? So I had an offer from McKinsey even before my MBA. So similarly, 50 other folks in 2021 had an offer from McKinsey. 
So you cut out even the numbers in the brackets, still it's a very significant amount of people who are going on to work in consulting. What about other sectors? Right? Let's look at tech. We look at Amazon, which is a 28 member, again 28 for among 1000 students, 900 to 1000 students, it's not a small number by any means. It looks small when compared to McKinsey, Bain, BCG, but in absolute terms, it's not a small number. So Apple, Amazon, Meta, these guys, the tech companies are also some of the strongest recruiters. They take in probably five students, 10 students, five, 10 at this range, right? Then there are financial services companies. The financial services companies are like JP Morgan's, Morgan Stanley's, Goldman Sachs, right? They recruit again for their London offices, their Sydney office, their Singapore, Hong Kong office, all these places. Now, why do these guys not figure in this list anywhere? The financial services companies. If you look at the two cohorts that INSEAD takes in, right? One is the July cohort and the other one is the December cohort. You can apply for any one of these, right? If you are going in the July cohort, the classes start in September, August, September and they end in July, right? So there is no scope for internship, right? which is a very important component for financial services companies. If you look at the December cohort, there is a two month break in between. That is May, June, right? These two months, actually you can go and do an internship in a financial services company if you want. And that acts as a great networking platform and you were actually having a potential chance to get recruited in a financial services company. These financial services companies, unlike any other company, typically have a lot of lead time. They have at least four or five conversations with every single candidate, even before they pass on the interview invite. Right? So that's a very tricky scenario if you are interested in financial services companies, but if you are coming in the July cohort for NCR. Now looking at, let's say our US counterparts, right? US business schools. If you are going in for a consulting heavy school, let's say like Darden or Kellogg, right, which is a marketing heavy school, or even these schools on the West Coast, like let's say UC Berkeley, all these schools, again, the number of folks who go into financial services are very low, right? But if you go and look at the schools like Columbia, Wharton, Stern, these are in the hub, right? These are on the East Coast, very high access to Wall Street. So a lot of people actually go into financial services companies. So if you are objective is to get into the financial world, opt for the December cohort at INSEAD or go for some of these top schools which are very closely located to New York. Okay, now moving on into the third topic of our discussion that is where do Indians go and actually work? Now in terms of geographies, I know that hey a lot of my friends after INSEAD and I have known a lot of people after my graduation as well from INSEAD, a lot of them continue to work in Singapore or Dubai or in London. Right? So these three are some of the top spots for Indians specifically graduating from INSEAD. Now a lot of my friends and extended network folks who did their MBAs from the US, 90% of them have settled back in US itself. Right? With respect to sectors, the two primary sectors where I have seen majority of the Indians going and working after INSEAD, one is consulting, of course. Number two is tech, right? A lot of people actually go to Amazon, right? In this 28 number, I believe very strongly that probably 20 of them are Indians, right? If you are looking at a batch size of, let's say, have Indians between like 70 to 80 folks and roughly 30% of them going to Amazon, that's a huge number, right? So I believe when you combine Apple, Amazon, Meta, and some of these Googles and top, top tech companies in the world, then a lot of them are going, Indians specifically, are going into these tech companies. These tech companies are hiring for Luxembourg office, London office, Singapore office, Dubai office, so on and so forth. Right? So that's the geographical distribution and that's the sectoral distribution for Indians in specific. Okay. Now we have covered through the salary numbers, we have covered through the geography, we have covered through like where Indians go and work. If you ask me, how is the placement scenario in general at INSEAD? It's very strong, right? What we look at is that if you look at this specific employment chart that we have already gone through, right? The top 10 companies are only hiring close to 300 folks out of a 900 class, right? Now, that's a small number. Where are the other 66% of the folks going in? The other 66% of the folks are going into 260 plus unique recruiting partners. 
So a lot of folks actually go into different companies around the world. I know people who are working at Agoda. I know people who are working at Lazada. I have no people who are working at some of the startups in UK, right? Payment startup, fintech startups, right? Different places around the world. There are 260 unique partners. And even if you take each guy, like taking one or two students, you are looking at massive numbers and massive variety, right? And a lot of Indians actually go into these places as well. So it depends a lot on what you want. Similar to the US business schools, of course, nothing different over there, except that you also have a lot of geographical flexibility when you come to INSEAD. All right, guys, I hope you actually enjoyed, you actually learned something from this video. If you do, please click on the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Just also want to let you know, this video I made because I've seen somewhere in the comments in one of my latest videos that, hey, can you please prepare a placement scenario kind of video for INSEAD? And this is the outcome of that comment. So thanks for that comment. And if you have any such questions, please do post it on my comment section. I will look through them and I'll make a video at the earliest possible. Thank you so much, guys, and look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.